Hello everyone. How are you? I hope you all guys are fine and sound and hoping that you guys are doing your study regularly. This is AJ sir, lecturer department of biology, St. Gregory's High School and College. So here I am today uh, going to discuss about uh, digestion of food. Uh, so let's start. So we are going to discuss the topics we are going to discuss today is digestion of food in mouth and stomach and small intestine and in large intestine. And later we are going to discuss absorption of food and assimilation. So our first topic is digestion in mouth. And as you know, uh, our mouth is the first uh, portion of our digestive tube or digest uh, uh, when we eat something, uh, when we put some food in our buccal cavity or in the mouth, our teeth and tongue cut it and mix it with the saliva and makes it into smaller pieces of components. Means when we eat something, uh, when we uh, put some food in mouth, our teeth starting mechanical digestion. And after mechanical digestion, when foods converted into smaller pieces, then it mixed with saliva that excretes from uh, the salivary glands. Salivary glands. I have discussed about different kinds of digestive glands in my previous class. If you haven't done that class yet, please go there and uh, go to my playlist or my YouTube channel. You can get the video there and please do that class. And still if you have any confusion about that topic, let me know and put your question in the comment box. Okay, we are in saliva. Then food mixes with saliva and saliva makes the food slippery and inside of sal saliva there are different kinds of enzymes that helps to digest the food elements into some simpler components. As you can see there are talin and maltase, there's two kinds of enzymes in saliva. How do they do? What do they do? Okay. Talin converts the carbohydrate of food into maltose. And maltose converted into glucose by the help of maltase. Okay. That means talin and maltase both are doing the same thing. They are converting the carbohydrate into glucose. But as uh, we don't have any proteolytic or lipolytic enzyme in our saliva, that's why we can't digest any protein or lipid or fast food uh, in our mouth. So only carbohydrate and rich food can be digested in our mouth. No protein or fats can be digested in our mouth. And further, when food goes down through the digestive tube, esophagus also cannot digest the food as well. Why so? Because esophagus also doesn't have any kinds of digestive glands or that kind of cell who can uh, secrete any kind of enzymes or juices that will help the food to digest means there is no food digestion occurs in the esophagus. Then the food comes to stomach. Here as well, when food comes to the stomach, food uh, creates a pressure by its uh, internal muscles on the food and Pressure is it so heavily that the food may uh, 
turned into kind okay this is a mechanical digestion after that the chemical digestion starts how does it start so inside our stomach there are different kinds of glands uh, called gastric glands they secrete a uh, gastric juice uh, from the inner wall of our stomach and this gastric juice contains different kinds of components such as hydrochloric acid pepsinogen proreneine so let's see let's uh, see how they work okay so hydrochloric acid it's a very uh, very acidic acid uh, here in our stomach its ph is uh 1 2 3 okay so as you can see the ph is very low that means uh, that indicates this hydrochloric acid is very acidic that can destroy any germs that comes with the food uh in the stomach okay not only that the uh, proteins uh, the the enzymes actually the enzymes that remains in the gastric juice called uh pepsinogen and proreneine they are actually inactive enzymes uh, so how do they get active to uh, digest the proteins in our stomach so this inactive pepsinogen and proreneine only can be activate when the environment is acidic that means when hydrochloric acid uh, secretes from the inner wall of stomach only then this pepsinogen and proreneine can be active and when pepsinogen activate it converts into pepsin and proreneine converts into renin these two are uh, two enzymes that helps the uh, proteins to digest or to be broken down into simpler forms simpler forms means polypeptides okay protein is also a polypeptide but uh, here pepsin and pro uh, pepsin and renin converting this protein into some uh, simpler polypeptides okay and that simpler polypeptides when uh, go to uh, duodenum or uh, of uh, small intestine with the food they are they can be broken down into amino acids that means here uh, the broken down of protein isn't completed yet it's incomplete protein digestion in stomach is an incomplete process in small intestine it can be completed okay fine and one another thing in uh, stomach no carbohydrate can be digested why simple as there is no uh, amylolytic acid amylolytic enzyme that means the enzymes which helps to convert the carbohydrates into simpler forms as glucose these are not here these are totally absent here so carbohydrates can be converted here so question remains here can fats be con fats can be converted here uh actually uh, in your book uh, uh there is a, a line i mentioned that fats can be converted uh, into fatty acid or glycerol in stomach that means fats can be digested here but actually a small amount of fats can be converted into fatty acid or glycerol by the help of lipase enzyme okay but a small amount of lipids or fats you have to rem uh, remember that okay when uh, the digestion of carbohydrate protein and lipids all this digestion uh, finished in stomach that means uh, digestion uh, uh, in stomach completed the food then goes to the duodenum of small intestine okay now we will start the digestion in small intestine digestion in small intestine starts when the food arrives in duodenum duodenum section then food uh, when duodenum uh, start uh, 
some uh, secretions, the adrenum starts some secretions, uh, like as pancreatic juice comes from pancreas and bile comes from liver through gallbladder. This pancreatic juice and bile plays a vital role in small intestine to digest all kinds of food elements such as carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. That means all kinds of food elements like carbohydrates, proteins and lipids can be digested here in small intestine. After that, uh, the pancreatic juice comes from pancreas by uh, bile duct and uh, bile come from uh, liver through gallbladder. Also, they come from uh, come through bile duct. What they do? What they actually do? They are uh, actually alkaline in nature. Alkaline means their pH is differently higher than seven, differently higher than seven and lower than fourteen. Okay. Pancreatic juice actually do a very important thing here. Pancreatic juice contains different kinds of enzymes. They can convert uh, any kind of food elements into simpler forms. That means pancreatic juice contains amylase, uh, trypsin, lipase. That means they can convert carbohydrate, protein, lipid into their simpler forms. And then what happens? And then it comes to about bile. What does bile do? Actually, the fats uh, the fats uh, in our food uh, these are some uh, complicated molecules and molecules and then can be uh, mixed with enzymes properly for that reason fats can be broken down in uh, some uh, smaller molecules and who do that bile do that Bile has some bile salt, bile contains some bile salt named sodium glycolate and sodium torocolate. This sodium glycolate and sodium torocolate breaks down the uh, fats into some smaller uh, particles called fat droplets. And then these fat droplets can be uh, mixed with uh, different kinds of lipolytic enzymes that can comes from uh, can be can from uh, pancreatic juice from intestinal juice from intestinal glands and then these fats can be converted into fatty acid and glycerol that means definitely bile is playing a very important role here so that is about, all about uh, small intestine and definitely uh, we are all kinds of uh, carbohydrate, protein and lipid, all kinds of protein and um, food elements digested here and after that digestion, what starts? Absorption of food also starts from this small intestine. I'm going to discuss it a uh, small time later. Okay, now I'm going to start uh, about uh, the digestion in large intestine. Actually, uh, there is no uh, digestion in large intestine. No, uh, no digestion occurs in uh, large intestine. Then what do large intestine do? Actually, the uh, undigested things, undigested products that remains in the small intestine, they, they come to large intestine. And they, uh, then some water, enzymes, proteins, uh, uh, some kind of uh, lipids, all, they also come here. Okay. Then also some uh, capillaries, they absorb some, uh, some amount of water, salts, lipids, uh, salts from here. And some unnecessary thing, those are not necessary for our body, they remain here and they then they converted into stool or faces and then these faces or stool stool stored by our rectum and uh, you know after that uh, when you go to washroom uh, through anus the stool or faces go out so that's the rule of our large intestine So here is the topic about absorption and assimilation. 
the most of the students uh, got confused the, these two words about these two words they think these two words are very similar the no, those two words are not similar, and their functions are completely different, okay? You can't uh, mix those two words. Absorption. What do you mean by absorption? Absorption starts in small intestine. In the inner wall, in the inner wall of small intestine, we can see some um, finger-like shape called villi, okay? And this villi also surrounded by some lymphatic vessel, blood capillaries, and what they do? They actually absorb the simpler food elements that just digested in small intestine. Means glucose, amino acids, fatty acid, and glycerol, these are absorbed from the small intestine to capillaries or our you know, circulatory system this that is called absorption but after that when our body cell thinks that uh, body cell thinks that uh, yes this glucose these amino acids these uh, fatty acid or glycerol i can uh, use them i can use them for my respiration i can break down it to produce energy by respiration that is when our body cell uh, thinks our body cell uh, absorbs this thing is called assimilation okay from the circulatory system when body cell takes them glucose amino acid fatty acid and glycerol that is called assimilation i hope you guys understood this and still i am asking the same thing if you have any kind of doubt or confusion about any topic that i have described here please put your comment in the comment section put your question in the comment section and let me know what you think about any the any of the topics i have discussed here okay if you like this video please put a like at least in this video that will definitely encourage me to make some more interesting videos for you okay boys so here is your homework so here have uh, i have uh, some uh, writing mistake uh, i have written uh, written a uh, large intestine here actually it should be small intestine so uh, mark it down your homework will be write the description of food digestion in mouth stomach and small intestine okay i hope you guys listen that so that's all for today definitely stay at home stay safe from this corona covid 19 situation I hope you guys will see the video and uh, uh, complete your studies and you will put your homework as soon as possible in the comment box and I hope uh, if you have any question definitely you will ask me. So, so thank you boys, thank you for today, thank you for watching the videos, I will meet you in the next class, goodbye.